Review, 2023 Kia EV6 GT Flex is a can-do attitude. The 2023 Kia EV6 GT proves that Kia can. It can make a four-door sports car more convincing than the Kia Stinger. It can sell a 120-horsepower budget car alongside a 576-horsepower electric crossover. That EV can sprint to 60 miles per hour quicker than the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT and Tesla Model Y performance. Kia can do performance, and this feels like an evolutionary step for a brand that started selling questionable budget cars in the US about 30 years ago. Far from perfect, but plenty exhilarating, the EV6 GT shows off this evolutionary performance potential. It can do all this without taking a big leap from the EV6 that launched last year. At $62,695 including destination, the EV6 GT is only $4,000 more than the EV6 GT line and nearly $10,000 less than the Tesla Model Y Performance and Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. The most expensive Kia is also the most powerful. The 800-volt architecture and 77.4kWh battery pack remain the same, but Kia essentially swapped out the rear motor of the GT line and put it up front, rated at 160 kilowatts per 215 horsepower, then dropped in a larger 270 kilowatts per 362 horsepower motor to power the rear wheels. They make a combined 576 horsepower and 545 lbft of torque, but the larger motors are the largest contributor to the 4,795 pound curb weight, which is 293 more than a similarly equipped GT line. Efficiency takes a hit, as expected, with the range topping out at 206 miles, down from 252 for the AWD GT line. The 21-inch wheels wrapped in Goodyear Eagle F1 performance tires also lowered the efficiency rating from 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour in GT line AWD to 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour, but that's the trade-off for what the EV6 GT was built to do, go fast. The EV6 GT shoots to 60 miles per hour in just 3.4 seconds and reaches a top speed of 161 miles per hour. I didn't test the top speed on a lead follow course adjacent to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, but zipping past a barren lake meet on the way from the Vegas Strip, the acceleration packed a punch every time. Unlike the Porsche Taycan, the Taycan GTS hits 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, the EV6 GT didn't pin me in my seat and threaten my lunch at launch, but from about 20 to 60 miles per hour I didn't breathe or blink. It's the kind of lightning quick acceleration unique to an EV's power delivery that the Kia Stinger GT can't approximate. Kia adds three more drive modes to the Eco, Normal, and Sport modes in lesser EV6 models. A My Drive mode lets drivers customize the throttle responsiveness, steering, suspension, stability control, and electronic limited slip rear differential, but it's buried in the touchscreen by at least four button presses, so it's nothing to adjust on the fly. The GT mode is much easier to access. Press the lime green button on the steering wheel and it turns most settings to Sport Plus, so the pedal firms up, the suspension stiffens, and the stability control relaxes. It didn't feel dramatically different from Sport mode, but the grip was more pronounced and the weight was better managed on the long sweeping turns on a single-lane highway around Lake Mead, where the EV6 GT was at its best. Then there's a hidden drift mode, which requires a convoluted sequence of steps, start in GT mode, keep your foot on the brake, hold the stability control button until it turns off and the icon illuminates in the cluster, then hold both rig and brake paddles for about 3 seconds. It essentially becomes a rear-wheel drive car with all the torque at the rear wheels. On the track, which was set up like an autocross with kinks, hairpins, a brief sweeper, and a straight to flirt with 120 miles per hour or so, we did not have drift mode enabled. The lead driver might have, however. In controlled pairings of two cars following an instructor who would go as fast as the slowest car, he came out of the hairpin with the rear sliding out, the rubber smoking, and the front wheels pointed straight where he needed to go. I followed in GT mode feeling the rear slide out behind me with the diff helping maintain speed through what was probably a lighter correction than it felt like. With most of the torque at the rear wheels, coming out of the turn was a blast and where the EV6 GT most proved its performance chops. Coming into the turn wasn't as grin or confidence-inspiring. 
The Sportune suspension and adjustable dampers couldn't alleviate the prodigious weight, even though the EV6 sits lower than other electric crossovers, ground clearance is 6.1 inches and it's about 3 inches shorter in height, on average, than rivals. There was some squish in turns, and the understeer posed an initial challenge on that same hairpin that I never fully figured out in two three-lap turns. Part of it was from light steering that caused me to tip in too early, but that's like the golfer blaming the putter. More heft on the wheel and more feedback would have been welcomed for this duffer. I also felt that there could have been more initial bite from the lime green monoblock calipers that grabbed larger 15.0-inch rotors up front and 14.2-inch rotors on the back. I didn't detect enough initial pedal feel in one-pedal drive mode or with no regenerative braking set. But exiting the turn was an absolute delight every time. Kia lets the EV6 operate well in two planes, being a quiet and comfy commuter loaded with Kia's best features, or to whip around uncrowded spaces such as on a racetrack. I'm not sure how many of the EV6 GTs will make their way to a track, Kia estimates production will be capped between 2000 and 2500 units, but the EV6 GT has proven that it can, better than any other Kia, and better than rival EVs. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.